Welcome to Social Studies with Miss Pritchard. This video is for Global 2 and it is Vocabulary Lesson 1. We are going to cover basic terms and absolutism. Remember, vocabulary is the key to passing the exam, so you have two options for writing your vocab. The first, you're going to need index cards, a ring, and a hole punch. And this is for flashcards. I would put the word and the image on the blank side of the card and the definition on the lined side of the card. Your second option, which might be easier in terms of organization, is to write them in your notebook. I would fold the pages into three separate columns, put the words in one column, the definition in the second column, and an image in the third column. All right, let's start at the beginning. Prehistory is the time before written records. History is the time after the creation of written language. In other words, the events are recorded. And this can be different for different cultures because writing developed at different times throughout the world. And in fact, there are still some cultures today that do not have a written language. They have an oral tradition and all the stories are passed by word of mouth. Social sciences, along with history, you have political science, that is the study of governments and power. Anthropology is the study of human development. Archaeology is the study of artifacts, and remember, artifacts are man-made objects. Geography is the study of the earth and its environment. Economics is the study of resources and how they're used. And sociology is the study of human interaction. All right, more basic terms. A primary source is a first-hand or eyewitness account. It is documentation that comes from the actual time period. A secondary source is a second-hand account. So it's a story told to somebody else or it's documents based on primary documents. Climate, that is the weather pattern for a region. Longitude, those are imaginary lines circling the globe, and they measure distances east and west of the prime meridian and the international date line. These are the lines that set our time zones. Latitude is also imaginary lines circling the globe, but they measure distance north or south of the equator, and that's what helps us determine what the climate for a region might be. The farther north or south you go, the colder it is. The closer you get to the equator, the warmer it is. Topography is the study of the surface of the earth. Is it mountainous? Is it deserts or plains? Are there rivers or canyons? What is the land like? That is topography. Think of it as the top of the earth. Resources. These are things needed to survive. Food, fuel, shelter, and remember, they can be renewable or non-renewable. Things like wood are renewable. We can always plant more trees. However, oil is non-renewable. We have a set amount of that within the earth. Scarcity. That means limited or not enough. Economics is based on the idea of scarcity. There is never enough of all the resources to meet all of the needs, so you have to make decisions. Prosperity. That means there's more than enough or you're wealthy. On to the English Civil War. At the start of the English Civil War, it is a fight about absolutism and divine right. Absolutism is the belief that the king has total control over the country. Divine right goes along with that with the belief that God chose the king or queen to rule. Charles I of England is the first in He's the English king from 1625 to 1649, and he is the first European monarch executed by his people. Oliver Cromwell was an English Puritan member of Parliament and the leader of the Roundheads. He had a strong belief in democracy, and he fought the English Civil War to establish democracy in England. However, he rules it as Lord Protector of England from 1653 to 1658, where he is pretty much a dictator. 
Parliament. This is the legislative body in the British government. It's similar to our Congress. They're the ones that pass laws. The Magna Carta, that's a document signed by King John in 1215, and that guaranteed the rights of English citizens, the biggest being habeas corpus. That is the right to be brought before a judge and have written proof of the accusations and to face your accusers. So that meant that if somebody was accusing you of a crime, you got to see them face to face and challenge that accusation. A constitutional monarchy is what is eventually established, and that's a democratic form of government in which the monarch's powers are limited and they rule with a parliament. Restoration. After Oliver Cromwell's death, they removed his son from the leadership role and they brought Charles II back to be King of England. The Glorious Revolution. This is the bloodless overthrow of James II. And this is when his oldest daughter and his son-in-law, Mary and William of Orange, take the throne, and that guarantees that England will remain Protestant because a lot of the underlying issue in the Civil War was religion and a battle between Catholicism and Protestantism. Other absolute monarchs you need to know about are Philip II. He is the ruler of Spain during the Spanish Golden Age. Louis XIV is an absolute monarch of France, also ruling during the Golden Age. Peter the Great was the Tsar of Russia, and he's credited with modernizing Russia. Catherine the Great rules after him, and she is known as an enlightened despot because she took a lot of the ideas of the Enlightenment and tried to incorporate them into Russian law. Henry VIII of England is the King of England. Elizabeth I of England is a Queen of England. Then there's Empress Maria Theresa. She is Austrian. And Frederick the Great is King of Prussia, which is part of Germany today. All right, don't forget to find images for all 35 words. You can cut and paste from online or you can draw them yourself. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to be a picture that you can link in your brain. And remember, the more color there is, the better.